The stock market is very good at predicting what will happen in the future. This is the statement that I made in my last video. And unsurprisingly, I received a lot of comments from people questioning, how can this be true? When the stock market jumps around so violently and we see stock market bubbles and crashes, clearly these things show us that the stock market is anything but accurate. Well, in this video, I'm going to teach you one of the most important investing lessons you will ever learn. And my good friend Elon Musk is here to help explain. Hello and welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new here, hi, my name is James. I am a financial planner and this is a place where you can learn to make smarter financial decisions. So what do I mean by the stock market is good at predicting the future? I know you're probably sitting there thinking, how can this be possible? It didn't predict this inflation or a recession, and it certainly didn't predict coronavirus. So what the hell are you saying? Well, let me bring in our good friend, Mr. Musk, to help explain things. As you may be aware, Elon has recently made an ill-fated attempt to buy Twitter. Between January and March of 2021, Musk quietly started building a stake in Twitter. And we now know that by March 14th, this stake had grown to 9.2% of the company. And over the following weeks, Musk tweeted a series of suspicious polls about the future of Twitter and how he would improve it. And on the 4th of April, Musk's stake in Twitter became public via a securities filing and the stock rocketed by 27% to over $50 on anticipation of a buyout offer. Over the following days, there was then a back and forth about whether Elon would join Twitter's board. And then finally, on April the 14th, Elon made an offer to take Twitter private for $54.20 per share, which is a 40% premium above where the Twitter stock was trading at before Elon got involved. Now, with perfect hindsight, we know exactly how this unfolds from here. But what do you think that the stock market is predicting at this point? Well, Elon's just made a bid for Twitter for $54.20 per share. So why hasn't the stock price jumped up to exactly that level? Well, the market must be anticipating that this is not a done deal. It must think that there is still a significant chance that this deal won't go through. And it was right to assume so because Twitter was not on board with this offer. And on April 15th, the day after Elon made his bid, Twitter adopts a poison pill in an attempt to prevent a hostile takeover. So at this point, we have two potential outcomes. Either Elon buys Twitter for $54.20 per share, or the deal falls apart and the stock falls back to where it was before this all started. With hindsight, we now know that Elon did not buy Twitter. And we could look back now and say that the stock market got it wrong. But did it? Back then, no one could have known for certain whether the deal would go through or not. There was a chance that the deal would go through. There was also a chance that it wouldn't. So at this point in time, on April 18th, the stock market is weighing in the chances of each of these two events occurring. So if you bought Twitter on that day for $48.45 and the deal did come off, you would have made a $5.75 profit. But if it didn't and the price dropped back to $38, you would be set to lose $10. So I hope you're starting to see that the market is not predicting that A or B will definitely happen. It's evaluating the probabilities of each possible outcome to arrive at a price that represents these known risks. So based on the fact that there is a $5.75 upside and a $10 downside, we might assume that at this point, the market is suggesting that there is a better chance of the deal coming off than there is it falling apart. And as we see over the following days, as Twitter engages in talks with Elon, the stock price rises as the chances of the deal going through increase. And then they finally peak after Twitter accepts his offer. You will notice that the price never gets quite as high as $54.20 because the market still thinks that there is a chance that the deal could unravel as it did quite quickly. Now, looking back in hindsight, we know that this deal has not happened. And you might think that, well, that means the stock market got it wrong. But that's unfair because at that time, no one could read Elon's mind. And the market was simply acting on all of the information that was available at that time. So when I say the stock market is good at predicting the future, I don't mean that it's telling us that A or B will definitely happen because no one knows that. Instead, it's assessing 
all of the facts and information that we have available to us right now to weigh the likelihood of each potential future outcome to arrive at a price that represents these risks. I like to use buyout examples to illustrate this because in these situations, there are two very clear potential outcomes. As another example, let's look at Activision. In January, Microsoft entered into a deal to buy Activision for $95 per share. On this announcement, Activision stock shot up to $82.31 per share, which is telling us that the market is still forecasting that there is a good chance that this deal will not go ahead. And as we can see, over the following months, we've seen the stock price decline as the anticipated risk of the deal falling apart has increased. Again, because we have two clear outcomes, it's easy to see how the market is pricing in future risks. Outside of these buyout scenarios, stocks have many, many more potential future outcomes. And as a result, it's harder to see this process in action. But the market is continually assessing each of these outcomes to arrive at a price that represents those known risks. At the moment, there is a risk of prolonged inflation, recession, and maybe even a war. I know this, you know this, everyone knows this. So the stock market will already be pricing in these risks. So now we understand that the market is forwards looking and rapidly pricing in new information. But is it any good? Is it accurate? In 1970, Eugene Farmer developed a model called the efficient market hypothesis, which put forth a framework to assess how efficient markets are, or how good are they at pricing in new information and weighing the risks of the future. In this, he theorized that stock prices adjust rapidly to new information as it becomes available, and that a stock's price reflects the fair value of that company at that time. It also stated that markets priced in new information so rapidly and accurately that it should not be possible for an investor to consistently identify undervalued or overvalued stocks and make a profit from it other than through luck. And stock prices move in a random, unpredictable manner as new information arises. This is a theory that was further popularized in Burton Malkiel's book, A Random Walk Down Wall Street. Now, that's a pretty big statement. If this is true, it would mean that all stock picking and market timing is futile. Just think about it. There is a trillion dollar active management industry that is based on the premise that it is possible to beat the market. And this theory clearly flies straight in the face of that. Now, Eugene Farmer actually went on to win a Nobel Prize for this theory and his other commitments to the field of finance. However, this theory has been the source of fierce debate ever since it was published, primarily because it assumes that all information about stocks and the economy is rapidly available to everyone and that investors are rational. Well, as a financial advisor, I can tell you that investors are anything but rational. In fact, there is now an entire field of study that is dedicated to the research of irrational investors. It's called behavioral finance and suggests that investors are instead driven by fear and greed that leads to stock market bubbles and other market inefficiencies. The debate about stock market efficiency is still ongoing. To me, it certainly seems like the markets are irrational at times. Or Maybe that's just because of their random nature. But as far as you and I are concerned, if the market is inefficient and it does misprice stocks at times, it's only really relevant if we can predict when it is being inefficient and we can profit from it. Otherwise, we may as well just carry on and behave as if markets are completely accurate all of the time. So if the stock market is inefficient and it can be exploited, we should see evidence that some investors are able to achieve higher risk adjusted returns than can be simply explained by luck. Remember, we do expect some people to outperform the market over very long periods of time simply by random luck, just like in a coin toss that has a 50-50 chance of landing on heads or tails. But if we have enough people playing the game, some people will end up with getting 10 or even 20 heads in a row. But as we know, if they keep on playing the game long enough, their overall score will revert towards the mean. So if the stock market is wildly inefficient and easy to exploit, we would expect to see evidence that lots of professional stock pickers are able to beat the market and achieve returns in excess of what can be explained by luck. 
If, on the other hand, only a handful are able to outperform, it would suggest that there are inefficiencies there, but they are very, very hard to exploit. And if there is no evidence of anyone being able to outperform, it means that markets are efficient enough that they cannot be exploited. As you can imagine, a huge amount of research has since been done to test these hypotheses. Some studies have shown that there is some evidence of outperformance, but only in a very small number of highly skilled investors, whereas many big seminal papers show that there is no evidence of active managers being able to produce any value net of fees. So perhaps it's right to assume that the answer lies somewhere between these two, that the stock market is mostly efficient, but that there are some inaccuracies that can be exploited, but only by a very, very small number of people that are skilled enough to do so, and that it typically takes a 20 year track record to be able to identify whether these individuals have actually been able to achieve their returns through skill or just luck. So what does this mean for us as investors? Should we be trying to be in this top 0.000001% of investors or should we just carry on and behave as if markets are completely efficient? For this, I'd like to paraphrase Professor Hirsch Sheffrin a pioneer of behavioral finance who has spent his life trying to prove that stock markets are inefficient. He says that yes, the stock market is inefficient and that theoretically we should be able to exploit these inefficiencies to turn a profit. But in practice, when trying to stock pick or time the market, our behavioral biases get in the way and prevent us from being able to execute properly. And that our poor execution typically leaves us with returns that are far worse than the market after costs. Because of this, he concludes that the vast majority of investors should behave as if the stock market is perfectly efficient. This is coming from a guy who has spent his life proving that stock markets are irrational, and yet he still believes that we should invest as if it is. So there it is. You and I should be acting as if stock markets are efficient. So when you are looking at the price of a stock or an index fund, we should assume that that price accurately reflects everything that may happen in the future, given what we know right now. So the next time you find yourself asking, is now a good time to invest? You should recognize that that is an impossible question because if it does look like there is an upcoming risk of recession or inflation and that companies may struggle, the stock market will already have fallen to reflect this and will now be offering you a fair price given the known risks that we face. And if it's offering us a fair price, then yes, now and every time is a good time to invest. Yes, we may look back with hindsight and say that worked or it didn't, but there is no amount of research that we could have done at that time to tell us that in advance. Now, whilst you've been watching this, you've probably been thinking, what about famous investors like Warren Buffett or Peter Lynch? Surely these are examples of people that have been able to outwit the market. Well, no. Most of these famous fund managers' outperformance can be explained by a few simple factors. And if you want to learn what they are and how you can try and replicate their returns, you should watch this video here where I talk about how I invest my own money. I'll see you there.